Hello student, welcome to the second lesson of this topic and we are discussing absorption of water and mineral source. But before that, let us look at the importance of water and mineral salts. First, water is essential for growth and development. When plants lack water, they have a stunted or slow growth. Water is a raw material for the process of photosynthesis. That is why, or that means, water reacts with carbon dioxide in the presence of light, energy, and chlorophyll to produce simple carbohydrates. Water acts as a medium of transport and also metabolic reaction. So metabolic reactions will take place in presence of water. For example, the process of photolysis, that is uh, where water is being split into oxygen, gas, and hydrogen atoms, which are used in the dark stage of photosynthesis. Water acts as a solvent for solutes in the plant. Most of the food substances like glucose are transported in solution form. Water provides a mechanical support because when plant cells are turgid, they are firm and rigid. That means those plants having weak stems, they depend on water for strength, that is, turgidity. Water has a cooling effect to the plant due to its high latent heat of vaporization, especially in hot areas. Now that we know the roles of water, we can look at the process of absorption of water. First, remember, water is drawn or taken into the root hair cell by osmosis. The concentration of the cell sap is higher than that of the surrounding solution in the soil due to presence of dissolved substances in the cell sap of the root hair. That means the cell sap is a hypertonic solution. It contains more solutes. A concentration gradient exists between the sap vacuole of the root hair cell and the soil water. And do you remember what osmosis is? Osmosis is the movement of water molecules from its region of high concentration to a region of low concentration. If that is the case, we have two regions where we have a higher concentration and a region of low concentration. That brings about a concentration gradient. That is why a higher osmotic pressure is exerted, uh, making water mole molecules to be drawn across the cell membrane into the root hair cells. Osmotic pressure of the root hair cells overcomes the water retaining powers of the soil. Hence, water enters the root. And what is osmotic pressure? Refer to your Form 1 work to remind yourselves what osmosis is, osmotic pressure, wall pressure, tagger pressure, and such. This is it. We have the soil particles containing higher concentration of water molecules than the cell sap. So a concentration gradient exists between this point and this point. Pressure is exerted to force water to enter the sap vacuole and water will keep on moving to the cortex or the adjacent cells up to the xylem vessels in the stem to be transported to the leaves where it is lost through the process of transpiration. So as transpiration goes on, more water is absorbed from the soil to replace the lost 
water. So more water is drawn into the root hair cells, dilutes the cell sap, making it less concentrated than the adjacent cortex cells. Water passes through the successive cortex cells until it enters the xylem located in the center of the root. Here. The xylem vessels of the root then conduct water up the plant into the xylem vessels of the stem and into the xylem vessels of the leaves. So this process will go on until water reaches the leaf. We move to uptake of mineral salts. The soil water contains mineral salts which are essential for growth and proper functioning of plants. The concentration of the sap into the root hairs is greater than that in the soil. That means Mineral ions will enter the root hairs against a concentration gradient. So the cell sap has more uh, concentration of solutes or mineral ions than the soil. So we would expect uh, mineral salts to enter the root against a concentration gradient, against underline against. That salts can be drawn from the soil even if their concentration in the soil is lower than in the root hair cells by active transport. This process requires energy. Mineral salts whose concentration is higher in the soil than the root hair cells are taken up by diffusion. I hope you are noting the difference between those ions that are taken by active transport and those that are taken by diffusion. Those taken up by active transport are the ones which are in less concentration in the soil but higher in the sap of the root hair cell and they will move against a concentration gradient. Mineral ions once after absorption, move through the root uh, hair cells into the xylem vessels of the vascular bundle. Once inside the vast xylem vessels, mineral salts are transported in solution as the water moves up due to root pressure, capillary attraction, and cohesion as well as addition forces. Let us now look at the process of transpiration. This is the process by which plants lose water in the form of water vapor into the atmosphere. And it is lost through the stomata, cuticle, and the lenticels. That gives us three types of transpiration. Let us look at stomatal transpiration. And it accounts for up to 80 uh, to 90 percent of the total water loss in plants. Stomata are found on the leaves, but may also occur on the epidemics of young plants. Then we have the cuticular transpiration. The cuticle is found on the leaves and little water is lost through it. So this is the uh, leaf, the epidermis and the cuticle. And the epidermis has the guard cells which control the opening and closing of stomata so that gaseous exchange can take place as well as uh, water loss through uh, transpiration. Plants with thick cuticles do not lose water through the cuticle. The other type of transpiration is called lenticular transpiration and it is loss of water in plants as water vapor through the structures called the lenticels found on the stems of woody plants. So water loss through the lenticel is negligible or very small 
Water lost through the stomata and cuticle by evaporation leads to evaporation of water, uh, evaporation of water from surfaces of the mesophyll uh, layers. You can see the mesophyll layers. The mesophyll cells draw water from the xylem vessels by osmosis. The xylem in the leaf is continuous with the xylem in the stem and the root. Let us now look at the structure and function of the xylem. Movement of water is through the xylem and it is made up of xylem vessels and tracheids. So we have the structure and function of the xylem tissues. The xylems are tubular. You can see they are tubes and they are non-living tissues. The walls of the vessels are strengthened by deposition of material called lignin and it prevents them from collapsing. This lign uh, deposition of lignin is in various patterns that results in different types of thickening. For example, the first one is called annular thickening. This one here is called reticulate and this one with bordered tips is called pitted thickening. We have the spiral um, simple spiral thickening and then we have the multiple uh, spiral thickening and this is because of the uh, deposition of lignin in various patterns. During differentiation, the cross walls and cytoplasm disintegrate and a continuous tube is formed running from the roots through the stems to the leaves. The border tips, these ones, are areas without lignin on the xylem vessels and allow passage of water in and out of the lumen to the neighboring cells. So these tips or points here will allow passage of water. There, are no th there is no thickening. That means there will be continuous supply of water through this part. Xylem vessels is a characteristic feature in all the flowering plants. The tracheids, here is a tracheid fiber. They have cross walls that are perforated. You can see these tiny holes are what we are calling perforation. Their walls are also deposited with the lignin material for strengthening. And unlike the xylem vessel, their end walls are tapering or chisel shaped. You can see the, the walls are chisel shaped. And the lumen is narrow or thin. The pits on the side walls allow lateral movement of water to the surrounding xylem vessels. So the pits huh, on the walls. This makes them less efficient than the vessels in conducting water. So these pits on the sides will allow lateral movement of water to the xylem vessels. That is why they are less efficient in transport of water. The trans tracheid perform both functions of support and transportation of water in pteridophytes and angiosperms. Besides transportation of water, xylem has another function of strengthening the plant which is provided by the xylem fibers and the xylem parenchyma. Let us now look at the forces that help in transportation of water and mineral salts up the plant. As water evaporates from the plants, more water is needed or absorbed from the soil. Water forms a continuous stream flowing from the roots up the stem to the evaporating surface. And that is what we are calling a transpiration stream because there is a, that continuous system of water uptake as more is lost from the leaves. So this stream carries water and salts in solution form from the roots to the leaves through the xylem tissues. And the forces involved include transpiration, pull, cohesion and addition forces, capillarity and finally root pressure, transpiration pull. As water vaporizes from the spongy mesophyll cells into the substomatal air spaces, 
the cell sap becomes more concentrated than the adjacent cells, leading to development of a higher osmotic pressure. And water is drawn into the mesophyll cells by osmosis from the adjacent cells and finally from the uh, xylem vessels. This means a force is created in the leaves which pulls water from the xylem vessels into the stem and the roots up to the leaf. That force is what we are calling a transpiration pool. And it maintains a continuous column of water from the roots to the leaves and it is important in the replacement of water lost through transpiration. So water will continue rising up uninterrupted. We have a cohesion and addition forces and this is the attraction between water molecules is called cohesion. So when we say we want cohesion, it means those molecules that are similar, like water molecules. The attraction between water molecules and the walls of the xylem is called addition or adhesive forces. The forces of cohesion maintains a continuous and uninterrupted flow of water in the xylem from the roots to the leaves because water are uh, mo water molecules are together water molecules are attracted to the walls of the uh, of of the adhesive and uh, cohesive forces in thin columns and can be very high and not easily broken especially the xylem vessels are very narrow that is uh, they will just attract and the thin column is maintained the other force is capillarity and this is the ability of water to rise in fine capillary tubes due to surface tension. Silent vessels are narrow so water moves through them by capillarity. Capillarity is higher in narrow tubes and surface tension is that you cannot just break the, the water molecules apart, they will just uh, be together and form a continuous and uninterrupted flow up the stem. For effective capillarity, there should be no air bubble in the water column, for this would bring about vessel blockage. The other one is root pressure. And if the stem of a plant is cut above the ground level, it is observed that the cell sap continues to exude or to come out of the cut surface. This means that there is a force in the roots that is pushing water up the stem. Because if you cut a surface, you will find that there is something which is uh, coming from the cut surface. That means there is a force pushing the uh, water upwards. And that is root pressure. And it could be attributed to the pumping, active pumping of water across the endodermis to the xylem vessels. Energy must be there for this process. And if respiratory inhibitors like cyanides are present, they reduce root pressure. We are done with that part. Um, just go through this assignment and you will be able um, to understand well.